Hello once again, this is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I have been going over the PowerPoint presentations for Web Development and Design Foundations with HTML5 by Terry Felt Morris, the 8th edition, and we're up to Chapter 4, which is on Visual Elements and Graphics. Again, we have around a dozen objectives. Create and format lines and borders on web pages. Apply the image element to add graphics to web pages. Optimize an image for web page display. Configure images as backgrounds on web pages. Configure images as hyperlinks. Configure several different CSS3 visual effects such as multiple background images, rounded corners, box shadow, text shadow, opacity, and gradients. Work with RGBA, which is red, green, blue, alpha, and HSLA, which is hue, saturation, light, alpha, coloring with CSS3. Use HTML elements to caption a figure. That's HTML5. Use HTML5 meter and progress elements. Talk about where you can go to find free and not free graphic sources. Follow recommended web design guidelines for graphics on web pages. So it's sort of hodgepodgey. First thing that's discussed in here is a horizontal rule. And again, if I go back, let's put... Uh, after every paragraph, let's put an HR tag. After every single paragraph we've got in here. All right, so there's one at the end of paragraph one, paragraph two, three, four, five, and six. So we now have six horizontal rules. And there's one, there's two, there's three, four, five, and I probably missed one. Guess that's six. Horizontal rules are something that, at least hopefully for everybody, it's pretty self -op, you know, self-evident of what's going on in there. Configures a horizontal line. Now, by default, that line is 100%, but you can change the percentage on it if you want to, have to, need to, whatever. Border property. All right, let's take a look at the example that they have in here. So we're going to go to our H1 heading that we had before, and we're going to put a border around it. The border will be two pixels wide. It will be solid, and the color will be red. Now, we've got an H1 tag. We don't have an H2, so we'll change this. But let's go into our CSS file. Let's put it in there. Let me hit enter quite a few times here to move this up. So I'm going to change this from an H2 to an H1. So again, we're saying that for this H1, we want whoops, we want a border in here. We want the border to be two pixels wide, solid in color, and red in color. All right. So. That, but so let's run this again. We'll come down to the bottom here, right there, and you can see that there is a red border around it. Now, some of the things that we can do with that, if we want to, I could make it a lot bigger. So I could make it six pixels, and instead of solid, I could say dotted. Let's see what that how how that changes. Okay, it's thicker and it's dotted. What if I don't want dots? I can make it 10 pixels and I can say that it's dashed. And instead of making it green, let's make it blue. All right, just so you can see some of the different things that you're able to do with this if you're so inclined. Now, we've talked a little bit before about block elements and about inline elements. 
A block element means that it has a blank line before it and a blank line after it. Inline does not. All right. So, for instance, an H2 tag is a block element. So an H2 tag will naturally have a blank line before it and a blank line after it. An A tag, on the other hand, is not a block element, it is an inline element, so it will not have a line before it or a line after it. Now, I showed you some of these already. I'm not going to run through them anymore. You'll notice that with some of this stuff, it'll be different depending on the browser that you're using, but most browsers pretty much will display all of these. Now, if you want to, you don't have to have the border all the way around. So previously, we came in here and we put in border. All right, let's go back to what we had before. It was two pixels and it was solid. All right, but let's say that what we want, this is going to look crazy, but just so you see it, let's put in border, top, And we'll have a bottom and we'll make that one one pixel and we'll make that uh, let's just make it yellow and let's make it dashed and we can have a border right So we'll have a border right. We'll have that be three pixels. We'll have that be dotted. And we'll have that be green. And finally, we'll have a border top. And let's make that five pixels. What do we have dashed and we have dotted? What else was there? Uh, I think there's a double. And we'll make that orange. Now, this is going to look pretty crazy, but it's just to show you what you can all do. All right, there's the double. Very hard to see. There is a yellow border here, but it's almost impossible to see. There's the double orange. There's the green. There's the yellow, which I said you can barely see. I don't know what I had here for left. Or did I? Top, bottom. Oh, there's a. Okay, that should have been left. And let's, instead of yellow, let's put pink. And this was blue. Let's just, we're just going to use all the names. And there you see it. Okay. The pink isn't really showing. I can actually see it here, but it probably doesn't show. There's blue. There's green. There's the double orange. In fact, instead of the pink, let's just try white. And when we get done, let's add a few blank lines in here just so it's easier for us to see. BR, BR, BR. All right. Again, that's white. It doesn't show well. There is blue. There is green. So what's not showing? And that would be our bottom. Which we said pink. Let's try making it purple. It's also only one pixel, which makes it hard to see. So let's make it four pixels. And now you can see we've got four different colors. Why you'd want to do that is way beyond me. But the point is, if you do want to, you can break this down. Instead of saying just border, which puts a border all the way around it, you can have top and or bottom and or right and or left. Padding. Padding is kind of an interesting thing. I want to show you padding and I want to show you margin in this. I want to run two things pretty much in the same way and hopefully it'll show you the difference between them. 
All right, so let's go back to our H1 tag. And let's just put a border all the way around it, two pixels solid blue. All right, and we're gonna get rid of all these. Now padding is just the same way in that I can put in top, bottom, left, I'm sorry, top, top, right, bottom, and left. If they're the same number, I only need to lose to show it once. Let's change all these. Let's put six, eight, and ten. Well, it's going to look a little strange, but hopefully this will be enough where it can show you what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to refresh. And it's very hard to see what we have here. It doesn't really look any different, which wasn't what I expected. Let's try 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 40 pixels, and 50 pixels. Let's see what that does. All right, so padding is the area kind of within here. So we changed it around. Now, sometimes padding and margin are, it's very easy to mistake those two for what one means and what the other means. So I'm gonna take that padding line that I just put in here. And if I'm putting in a comment in a CSS, it's slash star and ends with star slash. But I'm gonna change that from padding to margin. I wanna see if it looks any different now. And you notice that it does. All right. So padding is the area around something. We're in a later chapter. We're going to go over what's called the CSS box model. Let me just show it to you right now. And there was a there's a real good thing out here that's by something that's called Red Melon or was called Red Melon. I'm not sure if it still is or not. That's the one I want to show you right here. So when you look at this, and it's a little hard to see, but margin is the area here. Padding is the area here. So notice as we start to move things, whoops, as we start to move this, I guess it's not going to let us change this one out here. All right, here's another picture. So margin is on the outside, so it's what's around everything outside of the border. Padding is outside of the element. You're going to see this much more in later chapters, but I just wanted you to at least see here the difference between margin and padding. I've already shown you, you can top left, bottom right. Again, it's like a clock, top then the second one is right, then the third one is bottom, and the fourth one is left. There are a lot of shorthands that you can do. If you only have two numbers, then the first number will be for the top and the bottom, and the second number will be for the left and the right. If you have all four, you can. if they're all different, you have to put them all in. You can also, you can, instead of saying padding with different numbers like this, you can say padding top, padding left, padding right, padding bottom, etc. if you want to do that. All right. Graphics. Graphic types commonly used on the web. All right. GIF is probably the, the type that's used least often because GIFs pretty much look unprofessional. JPEGs and pings used much more, look much more professional. Let me show you. Let me try to grab something and see if I can grab a, a ping and a JPEG file. Okay, and we'll end up putting those. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go to Google. And I'm going to go to Im Im Images or Google Images. And I'll put in car. I don't know. Just made that up. All right. I'm looking for something that's, how about... Small car image. All right, that'll be fine. Give me 
there's a couple of these. All right, so I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to do a little bit different here in my desktop. I'm going to create a folder here, and I'm going to call the folder website. And underneath that folder, I'm going to create another folder. Whoops, I don't want it shortcut. I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call that folder images. And then I'm going to save this to call it small car. I'm going to save it to, to here. All right. And here I'm going to try a small car PNG image. Okay. So let's grab something and that'll be fine. Save this image. Asked for a JPEG for ping, and they gave me a JPEG. So there's a ping. Another small car, and one's a ping, and one's a JPEG. Okay. Now to make this work the way I want it to work, I want to do one more thing, and that is I'm going to grab, I'm going to close my CSS file, and I'm going to close my HTML file for now, and I'm going to grab both of them all the stuff I've been working on in the last few chapters. And under my desktop here, where is it? There's my website file. There's my images directory. I'm going to make another directory that I'm going to call CSS. And in that directory, I'm going to drag in my style.css file. And I'm also going to drag in my index file, or was it test? Which one was I working with? Not test. There's my index file. Move that there. All right, right now when I double click on the index file, it should look the same as it did before. Okay, it does. Now you say, well, no, it doesn't look exactly. Well, it's because it's not using the CSS right now. Okay, how do I know that? Because right here, when we're trying to use the CSS, it says it's under style.css. It's not. It's under the CSS folder, style.css. So now notice, that's the way it looked. Then it looked like this. It's not showing yet. We want it to go back and look this way again. So let's see, why doesn't that work? This is my website, hrefcss style.css. Open CSS. It's not there. That's I guess that's why. I put that in the images folder. Yes, I did. Let's cut it from there. And let's paste it back in where it belongs in the CSS file. All right, now, when I refresh, it's back looking the way it did before. Okay, good. All right. Now, I want to go and add those images. So I'm going to come in here, and let's put one of them at the top and one at the bottom. We'll put them in paragraph tags. We don't have to do that, but we will anyway. All right. Then I need an image tag. The source equals images slash smallcar dot jpeg. Alt equals small car image. Let's start by just seeing whether or not that one worked. Okay, so look at that. File was not found. Oh, because we moved it. So it's under website. Desktop website. And there's our small car. There it is. 
Let's go back and we'll do the other one. We'll put that down on the bottom underneath our H1 tag. It's going to look almost the same as what we saw right here. And this was called, I think, another small car, but it was dot ping, PNG. And we'll just change the alt tag to another small car image. And there's our other one. So there's our second one. There's our first one. All right. Now let's go and kind of break this down and take a look at what we have here. I've shown you two out of the three Im types of images. I showed you the JPEG and the ping. Let's see. I don't know if we can find a GIF or not. How about uh, child GIF image? None of these look like they're GIFs. This is probably a GIF. Whoops. Could be. It's a ping. Some people can look at images and know if they are pings, GIFs, etc. I'm not one of those people. Let's do it like this instead. Let's go over to Google. Cartoon GIF image. All right. We'll grab the fox right here. We'll save that image. It says it's a ping. Cartoon GIF. Well, I wanted to show you a GIF, Cartoon GIFs. Yeah, those aren't GIFs either. Just GIFs, cartoons, free, I want an animated Cartoon Cute GIF. Well, rather than me keep working my way through this, which is silly, let's see if I have any GIF images myself on my own machine. Probably don't, but I'll try anyway. Look at my C drive here. We'll back up one level. Star dot GIF. Oh good, I've got some GIFs. There we go. We'll grab we'll grab this. We'll grab that alert. And we will copy it. And we will come in back and come back into here. And we will paste it. And I'm just going to call this, I'm going to change the name just to alert.gif. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to come back in here. And now right around in the middle, I'm going to add another paragraph. Image source equals alert. Alert.gif. Uh, alt equals alert sign. I don't know. All right, let's see if I've got all three of my images in here now. There's my one car. There's my second car, and it's not finding my alert sign. So why not? I 
be there. Alert.jeff. Alert.jeff. Oh, it's under images. Alert.jeff. Okay, now let's refresh again. There's that. There's that. I still don't see that alert. <sighs> Images. Oh. How about that? All right. So there's my, there's my JPEG. There's my GIF. And there's my ping. Okay. At least you've seen all three of them put in here now. So let's talk about each one. All right. GIFs. I think that's graphical interchange format. All right. Graphics interchange format. There it is. Best used for a very simple type of drawings like line art, logos. Notice only a maximum of 256 colors. It uses lossless compression. And lossless compression means that when you save it, even if you save it smaller than its original size, it'll do the best it can to keep and, and make sure when you compress it, it keeps its dimensions, for lack of better words. It can be interlaced. Maybe you've gone out to a website where you've seen a very complex image and when you go out to the site, you can sort of see, like, a, almost looks like a ghost where the image is kind of fading in. That's interlacing. JPEGs are more for photographs. JPEG, Joint Photographic Experts Group. Sometimes they're saved as files with a .jpg extension, sometimes .jpeg extension. Notice where you can only have 256 colors for GIFs, 16.7 million colors. For JPEGs, they have a lossy compression, which means, which means that when you save them and you try to change the size, make it smaller or whatever, that you have no guarantee that the quality is going to be as good. You can have progressive JPEGs, which is it says are similar to inter, interlacing. Ping is kind of kind of a cross between the two. Ping is portable network graphic, supports millions of colors, supports interlacing, has a loss less compression. So again, the idea is it combines the best of GIF and the best of JPEG. And it's pretty much the recommended file type that you should use when possible. So I showed you already when you put this on a page, I talked about the source attribute, that's the name of your graphic, including the path to where it is. The alt is what shows if the image cannot be found or if you put your mouse over the image. I didn't do a height and width, and I want to show you something about that. Let's go back to our folder here. Sometimes if you just take your mouse and you place it over the image, it'll show you the size. So there it says 31 by 32. This says 225 by 225, and this one says 261 by 193. All right, let's take this. Let's take this one because it's pretty easy. 31 by 32. Okay, so I could have, if I wanted to, I could have come in here and said, with all this stuff that's in here, I could have said width equals 32 pixels height equals 31 pixels. 32 by 31 or 31 by 32? Width is usually first, so it should have been 31 for the, for the width. So these are backwards. Now the advantage, this should not look any different when I bring it up. So there it is. When I refresh, this shouldn't look any different. And it doesn't. The advantage of putting in the height and the width is that you're letting the browser know ahead of time exactly how much room to put aside 
because you're giving it the dimensions of the graphic. All right. So when possible, it is recommended that you do that. Again, you must put in source. Today, you always should use an alt tag, but the height and width, although they're not mandatory, they're always recommended. You can also have an image link. <clears throat> So let's go and grab this and we'll, we'll try to create one of these. Again, I'll just put this into my file as I've been working on it here. Let's come in here and put in three more blank lines again. All right. And we'll have the href, we'll have this again go to http colon slash slash www.rankin.edu. All right, and we'll put that image, I'm going to put it on a new line so you can see everything that's going on here. All right, and we'll have the height and the width in just a minute. So, home GIF, that's fine, but what we'll do is we'll come back here. We'll come back into here. Let's go to Google Images again, and let's put in Rankin Technical College logo and the logo. All right, this should be fine. How about this? Right mouse click, save link at, not the link, save the image as. And it's a JPEG, which is fine. So we'll call this logo.jpg. So I'm going to change this to logo.jpg. Again, sometimes, now it probably won't happen here, but sometimes when you put your mouse, it doesn't show the size. Here it is. It's 160 by 160. You can, if you want to, go in and tell it to... Um, open with and you can tell it to open it with Internet Explorer then if you do that and you right mouse click and choose properties it'll show you the size that's another way of doing it 160 by 160 so it makes it easy for me I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say height equals 160 and I'm going to say width equals 160 and for the alt tag we'll put in here rank and logo Rankin Technical College logo. No, it wouldn't show because remember that's under our images folder. All right, so now we should have everything, ideally at least, everything is in there. We'll find out right now whether or not I'm correct. So let's go back to our page. Let's refresh, go down to the bottom, and there's Rankin. Okay, so I've shown you a JPEG, a GIF, a ping, and also this is actually now an image button because it may, not, may or may not look like it, but notice when I put it here, the mouse doesn't change, it becomes, it stays the arrow. Now it's a hand, and when I click it, of course I spelled right and wrong. That should have said rankin.edu, not rankka. Let's go back, let's refresh, let's run it again, and boom, we're going to go to Rankin's page. There we are. Thumbnails are basically when you create an image and you want a smaller version of it, you can make it into a thumbnail. Okay, just to show you an example, I'm going to come. I'm going to come back and show you one of my, for lack of better words, kind of favorite tools with this. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come back over here where we were. Let's find a big, big one of these. It's big. Um,
We'll grab this one, rank and professional grade. I'm going to do a, a save as. So I'm going to save the image as. I'm going to save it over here. And I'm going to call it rank and two dot JPEG. All right. So if I come back in here and I take a look, there's my rank and two. And the size is 299 by 169. But I want to show you one of my favorite tools here. And it's called makeathumbnail.com. All right. And it says, okay, what do you want? Choose your file. So I'm going to tell it to go in my website, into my image folder, and I'm going to grab that rank in two, and I want to make it 100 by 100, make a thumbnail. Now it made it for me, and it actually put it out here, and it even shows me if I wanted what the HTML is. I don't need that for right now, so I'm going to grab that URL, and I'm going to paste it in here, and there it is at 100 by 100. So I'm going to do a file save image as. We called this Rankin 2 earlier, but let's call it Rankin 2 dash TN for thumbnail. All right, so now we have that. So under the one that we just put in here, we're going to put in another one. This time, let's forget about the making this a, a button. I don't really care. All right, so this is under images, and this is Rankin 2-TN for thumbnail. And it was, remember, 100 by 100. So let's take a look and see if I did that correctly. Back to the web page. Refresh. Okay, the good news is that I, everything is right except for some reason I seem to have put the path in there wrong. Rankin-tn.jpg. Rankin. Ah, because I spell Rankin wrong. Boy. There it is, 100 by 100. So that's a thumbnail. You can, you know, makeathumbnail.com is kind of nice. It'll try to take anything that you have and make it into a thumbnail. For instance, I could have taken this one right here just to show you. All right. I'm going to come back here again. And I guess I was there already. And let's go back to make a thumbnail again. We'll back up. Choose a file. We'll choose this another small car. Make it 100 by 100. Make a thumbnail. It made it. There it is. Save the image as. We'll call this A, whoops, ASC for another small car dash TN dot ping. All right, so hopefully we did that correctly. And let's change this to asn-tn.png. All right, and we'll just put here another small car. Save. We go back to here. And we go back to our page again. It's not going to change yet because we didn't refresh. But there it is, real real size. And look below. There. Huh? ASCTN. I thought that was what I called it. Nope. I called it ASN there. ASCTN. All right. So watch what happens. There's the original size. There's the thumbnail. All right. So again, what I'm trying to do in here is to show you, rather than just going through these exercises, to show you a lot of what's going on in here. So I showed you the thumbnail. All right. When you optimize an image, typically then you're trying to make it smaller, bigger, whatever. Okay. And there are different tools that you can use for this. The one I'd recommend that you get to know 
is a tool called GIMP, G-I-M-P. The main reason, as it says there, it's free. I haven't used Pixlr.com. In fact, I used it, but it was years ago. But GIMP is the one that I usually use. So when you optimize an image, you're typically reducing its size because you don't have that much room for it on a page. All right. Here, they give you some, these are guidelines for naming images. All right, don't use, use all lowercase, don't use punctuation, don't change the file extension. If something is a GIF, don't make it a JPEG. All right, it's not going to necessarily look much big, better because you did that. Keep the names short, but make sure they're descriptive. I already started to show you the organizing the site. Okay. I, in other words, I gave you an images directory, I put in a CSS directory, etc., and you saw then how I had to use the path. I think what I'm going to do is break this down into two lectures, and I'm going to stop the first one right here. We're going to pick it up with the figure and figure caption in just a couple minutes.